In this problem, we have a hypothesis test, and it looks like it's for two proportions. Um, and it's talking about males and females, so let's go ahead and write that down. So it looks like we have males and then females. And if you kind of like glance at the question and look at the last sentence, it says use a 0.05 significance level, that's our alpha, to test the claim that the rate of left-handedness among males is less than that among females. So we care about people being left-handed in this problem. So as we read through the question, we know success is being left-handed. So let's see, in a random sample of males, it was found that 25 write with their left hands. So success is writing with your left hand. So there's 25 males that write with their left hand. So there are 25 successes. And 217 do not. So this is a bit tricky because to figure out the total number of males, we have to add the number that write with their left hand plus the number that write with their right hand. And this should give us the total number of males. So I'm going to put this in the calculator uh, just to be totally safe. So 242. So 242. That's the total number of males. Now for females, it says 69, right, with their left hands. So x2 is 69. And n sub 2, let's see, well, 453 do not. So it would be 69 plus 453. So n sub 2, n sub 2 in this case is 69 plus 453, so 522, so 522 females total. All right, uh, test the claim using a hypothesis test. So the first step is to figure out the null and alternate hypothesis. So we have HO, that's our null, and H1 is our alternate or alternative hypothesis. Now because we have two proportions, it's always equals, so it's P1 equals P2. In this problem, P1 is the population proportion of all males that write with their left hand. P2 is the population proportion of all females that write with their left hand. We want to see if the rate of left-handedness among males is less than, okay, so it's P1 less than P2. All right, for the next steps, we'll go to stat crunch, okay? So step two is the test statistic. Step three is the p-value. So let me go ahead and answer this question here. So check answer. Good. And we'll need two decimals for the test statistic. So we click on question help and stat crunch. I'm going to click on this to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So we go to stat, proportion stats. And we have two samples, and then it's with summary. It's always two sample with summary. So let me do that again. It's stat, proportion stats two sample with summary, because we have two samples, right? If we had one sample, we would just pick one sample. So if you have one n and one x, then you just go to proportions and you pick uh, one sample. So successes in this case is 25. Observations is 242. Uh, successes here is 69. And observations is 522. Leave it at zero. Remember, that's the same thing. Um, if you add p2 to both sides here in StatCrunch, you get p1 equals p2. It's the same thing as what you have here. Just change this to less than. Let's just check these numbers. 25, 242, 69, 522. Yep, everything looks okay. I'm going to click Compute. And there we are. So there's our Z. Z is negative 1.13. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Negative 1.13. And the p-value in this case, 0 0.1291. Okay, 0 0.1291. All right. Close this. So the test statistic is negative 1.13. Check answer. Fantastic. Three decimals for the p-value. You've got to be careful here. 0.129. It only wants three decimals, not four. Fantastic. All right, now we have to decide if we reject or fail to reject. So step four is the test decision. So when you get to this step, you look at two things and two things only. The p-value and your level of significance, alpha. So if the p-value is smaller, you reject h sub 0. If it's bigger, you fail to reject. So that's what we do in this case. Fail to reject h sub 0. And step 5 is our interpretation. 
So again, if the p-value is smaller than alpha, we reject H0. If it's bigger, we fail to reject. For our interpretation, we always start by mentioning the level of significance. So at the 5% level of significance, So whenever you reject H sub 0, there is sufficient evidence to support H1. So when you fail to reject, there is not. So there is not sufficient evidence to support H1. I'll just say to claim that. And then you can just get it from here, that the rate of left-handedness among males is less than that among females. That the rate of left-handedness, left, it's a lot of writing, left-handedness, big word, handedness, it's not a common word to use, <laughs> uh, among males is less than that among females, okay? So in this case, we would say the p-value is greater than the significance level, so we fail to reject, and then there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the rate of left-handedness among males is less than that among females. I think it's going to ask us one more question. Yeah, I want a confidence interval. Okay, so for the confidence interval, and I want three decimals. We just go to the same place and we just select confidence interval. So let's do it again. So you go to stack crunch. You click this so you can see it. All right, and we go to stat, proportion stats, to sample with summary, just like before. And again, just carefully type in the numbers. So successes here is 25. Observations is 242. Successes here is 69. And observations here is 522. Click on confidence interval. And it said 90%, so let's change it to 90. So let me just check this. So 25, 242, 69, 522. We clicked on confidence interval, it's 90. Compute. It's always the lower and the upper. Okay, it's always the lower and the upper. So, um, so let's write it down. So the lower in this case is negative 0 0.069. And the upper is 0 0.011. 1.011. So negative 0 0.069, 0 0.011, that's the lower and the upper. So it'll be negative 0 0.069 and then 0 0.011. So our confidence interval contains zero. So whenever the confidence interval contains zero, we can't say they're different. We can't say the proportions are different. Remember, if the confidence interval doesn't contain zero, we can say they're different. If we only have positive numbers here, your first proportion's bigger. If you only have negative numbers here, your first proportion's smaller. If you have both positive and negative, that means it contains zero. That means we can't say the proportions are different. So in this case, it's, it agrees with the conclusion of the hypothesis test, right? We failed to reject the null hypothesis, so we can't say they're different. So because the confidence interval limits include zero, it appears that the two rates of left-handedness are equal, right? It could, it could be equal. We're not saying it is equal. It's, it's, it's a little bit bad here. We, it, they could be equal. We don't know. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that it is less than that among females. So we, we, we don't have enough evidence uh, to say that they are different. So they could be equal. So that's it. Good job. Oh, there's another part here. Based on the results, is the rate of left-handedness among males less than the rate of left-handedness among females? Well, no, we can't say that. So we don't have enough evidence to say that's true. Um, so I would say, these say does. I'm going to say does not. The rate of left-handedness among males does not appear to be less than the rate of left-handedness among females, right? Because if we reject the null hypothesis, then it is. We fail to reject, so then we can't say it is, so... And that's the complete question. So uh, sorry for the long video, but um, these problems take a while. Uh, when you're going through these, just take your time, right? Take your time. That's it.